Okay, everyone. I'm going to give it a few more seconds, make sure everybody is in here, and then we will go ahead and get started. Hey. Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mary Gilbert, and I'm a community nutrition instructor for MSU Extension, covering San Lac and Huron counties. I'll be your host today as we navigate through our presentation. Before we start, I would like to say thank you for those attending our Healthy Living Together webinar today on organizing tips with Connie Kramer. Healthy Living Together is a project that was developed by McKenzie Health System in collaboration with the Santa Lac County Health Department, MSU Extension, Santa Lac Great Start Collaborative, and Santa Lac County uh, Community Mental Health to help you on your path to a healthier life. Originally named Healthy Lifestyles, this program has evolved as we continue to provide uh, valuable healthy living information for the community online. Over the course of this presentation, we will have uh, the Q&A open for all the questions and comments that you may have for Connie. Um, we will address these questions at the end of the presentation. The Q&A function is at the bottom of your screen. This will go for me. Um, and this event will be recorded and a link will be sent um, in a follow-up email. With that introduction, I would like to hand it over to Connie Kramer. Thank you, Mary. You're um, welcome. Greetings to everybody who um, is listening today. Um, organizing, they gave me the organizing tips and techniques title. How about that one? It's like the sky's the limit with that. And anything you do in your home or in your life that helps to make you a better organized person has benefits. So the smallest thing, um, I think what a lot of people try to do is that they binge organize. So they're going to like get in this mood to get um, organized. And then all of a sudden they overwhelm themselves with the upkeep of it and everything. Just a little background about us. Um, I represent Integrit Cleaning and Organizing Company. Um, we've been going since uh, 2013, and um, we specialize in all different types of cleaning and organizing. So our staff will do everything from hoarding cleanouts like you see on um, TV from the hoarding show to uh, residential cleaning. Then we also help people with organizing, and that can encase everything from uh, paperwork organizing to kids' rooms, um, pantries, um, laundry areas, um, craft rooms. We did a farmer shed for him one time. That was a fun one where we helped him organize all of his tools and things. And so the um, sky is the limit when it comes to what you want to choose to do. So the very first thing I tell someone when they're thinking about like, oh, um, self-assessment, like in real with yourself, my um, part of my life is a train wreck. How do I fix it? You can give yourself, um, if you get the most chaotic parts of your day and it changes for everybody because if you're a young mom with children in school, a lot of times those mornings getting the kids off to the bus or getting them delivered or after school with um, combining homework, putting a decent meal together, getting them off to hockey or whatever the nightly activity is, um, can really make a day out. It, you know, it takes a lot of physical and mental organizing in your head to even get that. And when you have a family, then you're also have to have food in the house. So your meal prep and planning just doesn't happen because you get home from work. It's like, what are we going to have for supper tonight? The old question, what are we going to have? And oftentimes when we're, the day is too crazy, then we want to do, do the drive-through. And that doesn't always fit in with your healthy um, option. So we'll touch a little bit on meal prep and planning a little bit here too, because that can really save your life in some cases when you're, um, when you're feeling stressed and nobody wants to get to the point where they're so stressed out that then they start yelling at the kids and then go into the library after school or picking in a fun event and ends up being a crabby event because everybody just can't find things. Where's my hockey shoes or my hockey skates? Where's my, um, my cleats for track or whatever I'm looking for. So, um, so we're going to do a little bit of a self-assessment first and, um, 
you might be unorganized if, okay? So I'm gonna ask everybody to score themselves um, from zero to 10 in the organization department. The first one I'll throw out there is the one we just talked about, and that is the um, good old morning routine. If you're, if you're past the kid stage and they can organize themselves or whatever, or you're just taking care of, let's say you and your husband or you independently, you're going to work, now you're, uh, it's a little bit different. But if I say to you, give me a number between one and 10 about how organized you are in the morning, because morning comes like fast and furious for us. So is it your clothes ready to go in the morning? Is there something always ready to rock and roll for breakfast, even if it's full of cereal? Is there gas in the car or is that something we have to think about on the way? Um, we have our lunch ready to go. We have other errands that we needed to merge into the morning, like running through the bank or, you know, dropping off a bill somewhere, um, mail, that kind of thing. So if you're, if, let's say Monday through Friday, if three of those four days are hectic for you and only two of them are smooth, maybe we should think about prioritizing mornings for our organizing. So if we carry that through, then we want to organize mornings, then there's a couple things I can help you with, to help you get like started. The first one is don't hit the snooze button. <laughs> as much as we want to hit the snooze button and grab those extra eight minutes or 12 minutes, whatever, if you can just make yourself get up and go and dress before you go anywhere in the house, you're already you've already got a head start. So if you get dressed before you even leave, you know, to go start breakfast or whatever, I'm guilty. I got to get the coffee going in the morning first thing. But if you make yourself get dressed, now you're dressed, you're ready to go. So whomever or whatever else you have to do with that, letting pets out, taking the dog for a walk, whatever it might be, you're already ready to go. The next thing is, um, you know, healthy body again, healthy choices, a decent breakfast in the morning. The old adage, um, you when you eat, you eat in the morning like the king and your lunch like the prince and you have your supper like the pauper is supposed to be, you know, the progression of lighter meals through the day. Um, but if you can, and Mary, you know, you know with your background in dietitian and, and teaching, it's a tough one to be organized all the time for new and exciting things better than a pop tart for breakfast in the toaster, right? So um, one of the things I really like to suggest to busy families right now is the really cool oatmeal in a jar because it offers so many varieties and you can do this on family prep day, like on a Monday. We like to encourage people to do food prep on Sundays and Wednesdays. That way, if it's a meat related thing, you're, you're like halfway through the week when you hit that Wednesday to finish out the week. And maybe like, um, maybe there's a takeout uh, one night a week that um, family chooses after the football game or maybe after church they go or something like that. But I really like the options of the oatmeal in a jar because not only can you choose what kind of oatmeal you want from old fashioned to steel cut, but you can have the kids put their own ingredients in the top of it so that um, it's, it's what they want, whether it be the flavored yogurts. And, and even if it's a blueberry yogurt, then you put blueberries in with it or whatever. So the other great thing about it is it can be eaten in a car if you get really rushed um, because they're in a jar and they're quick and fast to grab and you can just take the spoon with you. And then I, what I would say with that though is um, now you got to remember you've got to clean that out every day too instead of just throwing it in the dishwasher before you take off in the morning. So morning the other thing with morning especially with kids is laying out their clothes the night before um that's a really important thing that doesn't just stop at kids that's adults too it's a lot easier if you have what you're going to wear tomorrow all ready to go a little bit um somebody in the family can be tasked with what's tomorrow's weather going to be like um have them bring up the weather app and check out the temperatures so that we're not 
um, my son used to be famous for wearing the sweatshirt to school in the morning and then coming home without it. And when we would clean his locker out, we'd have like 12 sweatshirts. It was time to recharge and get all the sweatshirts back home. But the um, thing about that is now we're not overdressing or we, okay, we're going to need a sweater this morning and you take it from there. So that's something that you can start with in, in the morning and, and just try it. I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, when people try to make too many big giant changes in their life at once, they go in like I'm supercharged and just, just try one or two new things a week so that you don't overdo it because then you set yourself up for failure. And just like it, you know, it takes 144 times to develop, develop um, a sense of either a repetition relation or for it to become a new skill. So a new, a new, let's say, um, logo that you see, you have to see it 144 times before it starts registering that you know what that is. Well, it's the same thing with a new creative habit in your home. Um, other big thing when it comes to tips with organization and everything, you have to have a command center, whether you're an individual or a, um, a family. So dedicating um, a spot in your house, whether even is on the inside of a cupboard door, um, some place that you can post, you know, your business card reminder things. Um, I really like it when a family has perhaps a, like a mudroom and they can even paint a chalkboard wall, and draw out a calendar or write notes on it. The calendar is a must. And then uh, some people like to use electronic versions of that. That's great. It only really serves the purpose of that individual themselves. So if you have a family command center where it's like a wall or a small cupboard or something like that, that you can keep your calendars at, um, I like a combination of using electronic reminders and data usage kind of things like that. Also, I really like good old fashioned paper. A three ring binder where you make up your own three ring inserts. We've helped a lot of people with this and um, we have some great pages, but you can have um, areas in it that would be um, sort of like, I made a couple of them here. Your tabs in it would be um, related to the home. So let's say, for example, um, you've got papers in the home. Let's, let's say it's your insurance papers for your home that, that you, need, um, you need to have something reviewed on it or um, you have a bill that's coming up for it. I kind of like to keep in their own box, their own separate tab for the front because you need to go through those like every week to make sure you're not being coming late on something. But the other thing is like um, pets where they have, you have information on the pets, um, information on your car or your automobiles. And, and that includes things that in worst case scenario situations, if you couldn't be there to look those items up or you, you would have your license tab. Um, you can take a picture of it and put a picture of it in it. But things like that, that if you had to recall those things instantly, and when I say worst case scenario, I'm going to say your car was stolen. Okay. So it's your license plate number. Well, how many of us really know what our license plate number is? But in the family command center in our binder, boom, boom, boom we could have a picture of it there. And it would be right there from uh, for, for a safety and a quick response kind of thing. The same thing would be like copies of your dog's vaccination tag in case it got lost. Um, just things like that, that would be a good reference for anything that might come up um, out of the blue. Um, but then the other tabs in there would be definitely a calendar. There'd be a school events. Maybe you have got church in there as a tab for the things that you have to do for church. And everything, it doesn't mean it has to be handled this minute. It just, just like, okay, I have this church um, big sale coming up. I'm sticking it in the calendar tab. But when maybe I write it on my calendar, now I'm going to stick it behind under the church tab. So now I know I've got the date down, which my, my calendar or my binder is always open to the calendar every day. So that's what I see first and foremost. And I like to have a month view because the month view lets me kind of in my head pre plan what's going on. So now I take that, that date and I write down the church bake sale on whatever date it is. So now I go the week before when I go grocery shopping and I make a note on that date, like I have to pick up things, make things for the church bake sale. And, and it could be the school function or whatever. 
this is just a simple example. And then in the end, that goes underneath the church tab. So when I pull it all together, I have okay, what time am I supposed to be there? Am I working it or am it, you know, am I just showing up or what whatever? So that kind of you handle the paper maybe a couple times, but it's always there for reference. And the big thing about that is that it can always be tossed then when you're finished with the project. Um, mail handling is another thing, uh, just a real quick technique. Everybody probably has heard the sort your mail over the trash can thing. It's true. Um, we like shred anything with your personal information or your name or anything on it. Um, shred it and or use it in the campfire you know um as fire starter but that that's a, a really good thing but a lot of people make the mistake of putting their bills back in their envelopes and the mistake with that is leave it open wide open you're going to unfold it now you're going to stick that in to your bill thing you can write it on your calendar such such do today whatever but stick it in with your bills or make it out and then in the corner of the envelope, you're going to put the date that you have to mail it in order for it to arrive on time. Um, so that's that's kind of an important thing. The beauty of not putting it back in the envelope is that if it gets lost in the shuffle somewhere and now you can't find it. It's, it's just way better to open it up, flatten it out, and put it into your bill section. So you're welcome to ask questions about any of these things. When we set up um, binders for people, we tailor them to what their lifestyle is because what may work for me may not work for you. And I may not have the same important categories on my list that you would have. So, you know, let's say another category is, is grocery shop. So I stick a recipe that I might want to try under the grocery shopping tab. So then when I'm making my list and what's made things a lot more easy, I think in this world now is the pickup. You can do the pickup orders for grocery shopping. So you can actually sit at your countertop and put your order in or on your lunch hour or something like that. Go do your pickup. And from a time saving standpoint, it's like really good. But also you're not shopping with your eyes when you go into the store, when they put out all the seasonal things and things like that. So it actually helps you if you have budget goals as well. So um, I'm a real big believer in delegating jobs. Um, kids, I don't care how little they are, can put cans on the, on the shelf in a pantry or a cupboard and they can learn. They can learn that the can always faces the front and um, they can learn that those are the important parts of when we go grocery shopping, I'm helping to put things away. Um, it takes a lot of work to carry groceries in and put them away. But um, from another money saving tip kind of thing, when you are bringing your groceries into the home, wash your fresh produce right away, um, all of it, wash all of it in a mixture. I usually use uh, maybe a a cup of vinegar in with the water and wash it. Several things happen. Um, fruit flies, we all wonder where do they come from? You know, they just appear. They came from somewhere. So by washing with a mixture of water and um, vinegar, you're eliminating any gas on your fresh fruits and then um, putting them away in your containers. Um, I don't know who's handled that before you. You know, picked up the tomato or lemon or the orange or whatever, wash them for your family and then put them away. And then if it's uh, later in the week and you're doing your majority of your food prep on Sunday, like if you're going to try to do salads in a jar or oatmeal in a jar or whatever, then I just think it makes more sense to prep your, prep your food right away when you're going to be using it. Wash everything with that vinegar. Vinegar, the wonderful thing that it is, is a natural antibacterial, and um, it can it can really help in those things. The other thing is, I really think that it re, it enhances the life um, of your fruits and vegetables. I think because you're washing off bacteria, that bacteria is um, growth is retarded, and you get to keep it longer in your home. So that's at least in my opinion. Um, when you're 
when you're doing your self-assessment and you look at the parts of your day that are crazy and if it's if it's toward the end of the day and and I'm going to I'm going to use a busy family as an example again here so you've got um after school um and or after work and you come home everybody's tired toward the end of the day there's homework to do or there's uh laundry to get caught up on or you know feed the pets take the dog for a walk whatever and so our time comes into a crunch. So going, going back to grocery organization, if you organize your pantry by meals, now you have only to pull the protein out and figure out what you're going to have for protein. And you can actually even pre-prep proteins. So let's say it's chicken is one of your, say you're going to do, um, I'm going to give you a couple examples here. Let's say you're going to do something with chicken. You're going to we're going to put items and we'll make it uh, something simple like chicken alfredo and we're going to go simple we have we have the fettuccine noodles sitting right next to the jar of alfredo mix if you're not going to do your own and all oh, my family likes mushrooms extra mushrooms in the alfredo mix so we're going to put a can of mushrooms right there with it and guess what um, this will be the first time i have to use the um the pan for the um or the spaghetti that week. So guess what? Putting it all in the pan. Now that entire thing is going to sit on the shelf and Tuesday night's ready to go. The only thing I have to pull out is the chicken and I can do that up real quick, throw it in and get that browned and ready to go. And then put my Alfredo sauce in and boom, you know, throw a sa salad together and we're ready to go. And the salad can be pre-prepped on Sunday. So it's, it makes life a little bit easier. And then let's say that, um, you can go, let's say it's going to be a tuna noodle casserole. You can do the same thing right up to and including the casserole dish that you bake it in. So put it right on the shelf and put all your ingredients and everything right into that tuna noodle casserole pan. Now you pull it all out. There's no like, oh, I got to gather this up or do I have this in the house or whatever. Um, it's part of your meal. And some, um, some people who prep will actually do what they call brown bag prep prepping. Um, I like to be able to visually see what I'm what I'm doing. So we recommend always clear kind, kind of storage or plastic storage. The brown bag prep theory is the same thing. You take everything that you need for that meal and you put it into a brown paper bag and then it's like already pre-planned. So you can do that um, with, um, with as much, um, however many meals as you would like to. What I like to do is when we work with a family who's looking at that kind of thing, I like to say, okay, what's everybody's favorite meals? Or what's the most popular meals? Now, macaroni and cheese usually is a hands down winner. Um, families that are busy. So again, it would be, well, what are we gonna put with it if your protein? So you can even, if you wanna even simplify things, you can make it up the night before and throw it um, in a small casserole, have it ready to go in the fridge. And now you're looking at, um, you could even place some hot dogs if you want and throw it in with it, but um, throw it in the oven. And now in the time that the kids are doing their homework and mom's got some laundry rolling or whatever, or walking the dog, whatever, after school, after, after everyone gets home kind of chores, then food is in there cooking. So there's a lot of cool things you can do to modify your meals, even with, um, some of the nice par baked breads that you can get. And um, par baked breads are awesome for just putting a little bit of an extra spin on your meal because now you can have a garlic bread next to your spaghetti or your Alfredo and things like that. So um, when it comes to um, scoring yourself, like in your kitchen, if you feel like your kitchen needs organizing, you can give yourself a score of like zero to 10 and you can, you can put it into categories. So you can make your refrigerator one category. If your refrigerator is always a mess and you're finding the things in the back end of the refrigerator that you're tossing out because you're not using them, one of the easiest things you can do is get clear storage. So like the clear um, plastic containers for leftovers or clear glass containers, you put them toward the front, you load the front of your refrigerator. So they have to be looked at first. And then take a, a black 
marker around, a good permanent marker, and write expiration dates right on the top of things like cottage cheese or yogurts or things like that. Technically, you can eat yogurt past the, the uh, expiration date because of the nature of, of the beast, if you will. It, it's, it's still good. It's bacteria that's created it. Um, but if you need to use it up or something like that, then there's, there's ways you can use it up. And um, like even making one of the things that um, we do is we'll make cookies, take a sugar cookie in the bottom of a cupcake tin and with cupcake paper and then put your yogurt and your fruit on and you've got kind of a quick little dessert for, for kids to enjoy. Um, that's something. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different ideas when it comes to being able to assess yourself and what's really kind of maybe bugging you about your own home. So you start with the things that bug you the most and the things you really want to get a grip on the most. It might be taking care of the daily mail. It might be um, my laundry room is a mess. Um, and how can I, kids can learn how to fold clothes as young as five years old. They can learn how to fold clothes takes a little bit of patience and everything, but help them to develop pride and skills, pride in their own work and skill development that will last them for a lifetime. Um, and they need to have other jobs like um, being able to empty out the trash can and things like that. Um, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, mom or the dad shouldn't be doing everything in the house. It, it's a uh, house is being used by everybody. So everybody should have some kind of input in how things are going. Just one really thing, quick thing about bathrooms. Um, probably one of the biggest things we see in bathrooms when we're doing residential cleanings and, and clean outs and things like that is how many half used items there are. There's tons and tons of, uh, like I have half a bottle of, wild cherry lotion, right? If it's not being used anymore, some of those lo lotions and things can actually go rancid, depending on the base that they have. Get rid of it. And put the things that you use in a every single day, you know what you your, your go-tos, if you will, put those in a separate basket so that you can pull it out really fast, use it. Um, amazing how many times toothbrushes are used way past what they should be used when we see they're so bent or whatever it's like eh, yeah you know that one's probably good for cleaning around your faucet now <laughs> but get it get a new toothbrush we we also suggest uh it's another simple technique from coming back to healthy living if the family's had illness get rid of the toothbrushes when everyone's better and if they're still if they were brand new when people sick or whatever, you can bleach the toothbrush. Go ahead and bleach the toothbrush. And then that's that's just another little thing that you can rest assured in your head that it's it's taken care of. Um, when it comes to cleaners to keep your surfaces clean and things like that, um, it can just give you a clearer mind thought. That, okay, I've cleaned off my, my cupboard or whatever. We really do like a bleach cleaner, um, a bleach base cleaner because it's instant fill. <laughs> excuse me if you read a lot of the backs of your cleaning agents they have what is a kill time and the kill time doesn't allow you um it'll say oh remove the debris first oh yes we know that the dirt debris it's supposed to actually sit the solvent is supposed to sit or the the actual cleaner is supposed to sit for sometimes a um, to 15 minutes before it disinfects something so we like bleach because it's instant kill don't let the kids run around with that one unless you want white spots on everything so just common sense but um so that i digress into a little bit of our cleaning but whole idea behind the whole idea behind being organized is that your home is clean too or at least it's it meets your standard for your family so we always like to, when you do your meal prepping, we like to follow up with, you know, cleaning in between each one um, as you prep so that whatever you're working with, you know, like say you're cutting up chicken or whatever is handled efficiently and safely. So 
I hope, I hope some of these are, our books are full, just full of tips and techniques. Sometimes we share them on our Facebook page, which is Integra Cleaning and Organize, Organizing. You can find us on Facebook and please give us a like, but we, we try to share tips and techniques um, on our Facebook page. And then um, we oftentimes, we go out and give um, presentations to any groups who are interested. We, we oftentimes have handouts available too with a bunch of uh, different, we do consults for families who are just looking for some help and advice and we're happy to do that. But um, Mary, I'm happy to take any questions that you or anybody might have. So um, try to help you out that way too. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I did write down a few questions and everybody, uh, you are welcome to put yours in the chat and we can answer them as we go. Um, so my first question, I know that you had mentioned overnight oats and how efficient they are to starting a morning. They're also very healthy and good. Um, all the good things in there. Um, do you know where they might be able to find resources um, to get recipes for stuff like that? Well, the internet is chock full of them. I'm happy to let you okay. know that. Um, but Quaker Oats also has a website and uh, they're featuring some overnight oat recipes too. Um, Bob's Red Mill, another procurer of um, like um, especially like their steel cut oats. You can go to Bob Red Mill. They have a whole section for recipes as well. And um, if you just Google overnight oats, you'll be surprised at the number of recipes. And a lot of people like to just print them off. And then if you're going to put something like that together, take the input about from the people who are going to be eating it. And a lot of people like warm them up in the microwave in the morning so they won't put the yogurt in them just put milk in them because mm -hmm. when, when they warm them up in the morning, then they'll top it with the yogurt. After. Yeah. So, but you know, and cinnamon and apples, you can use eye filling in them too. Mm. So let's say that you've got a family that loves um, blueberries. You can use the overnight oats and just mix in pie filling with it too. It'll look awesome. kind of purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So along with the, the pumpkin, um, it's a season, yes. right? Um, yes. I like to take my pumpkin. Um, I'll bake it at 450 for about an hour. I'll skin it out and then I'll turn it into a puree with a food processor or by hand and a masher. That'd be a really good way to uh, introduce vegetables into somebody's diet as well throughout the yes. day. So it's a nice yes. savory thing. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So the other one that I have, I know that I personally am a person like that views things. Um, so one thing that I have found, and I don't know if you've had anybody do this or try it, um, is a shelf organizer in my kitchen space or the first space that I walk into um, in my home. So I can see kind of this is this is the thing and this is the way and I like to keep um, a whiteboard with my days and then that's how I can meal prep too. So those yes. are other ways I'd like to yes. introduce. Yeah. Um, and then I know I believe you may have covered it, the FIFO method or first in, first out. Yes. Um, are there some ways that you suggest uh, people do that? Um, space is a good reason or a good way to do it, but mm -hmm. we're kind of blatant. We'll tell you to write it in big letters right across the label. If it's in your face and you have to see it, you've paid money for it, you don't want to waste it. So you're going to use that up or you're going to design a menu that's going to use those items up. So, mm -hmm. and um, worst case scenario, uh, we've, we've cleaned places out with, and it just makes you sad because food costs, you know, are something that families are, I think on the average thing up to 40% more right now than two years ago. So, um, so waste food is, is, is sad thing. So, we even are saying if you have someone, let's say that it's a, let's say it's a can of peas. Okay. And it's like, well, you can open them and try them. There's a lot of times where there is a significant change in the quality, especially if it's something that you're going to bake with. I see it more so then. But if you have a friend who has chickens, give them to the friend because the chickens will still eat those things and they think it's a treat. And it, and it works fine. Um, if it's tuna fish, you can give it to your cat. 
you know, if it's, if it's something that a dog or cat can eat, don't waste it. If it's a little bit out of date, the cat's not going to, they're going to think it's, you know, like steak tonight. <laughs> so, but so I take the marker and, and that can be a job for the kids. Find the expiration date on the can. Some of them are in code. So you have to do a little homework, but if you find something that um, isn't like easy to, to see exactly what the date is, you can go on the manufacturer's website and they'll give you instructions on how to interpret the date. So. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing that I like to do for my produce, um, I found this online actually, and, and within my freezer too, I have a deep freezer and then a regular freezer. Um, I took a sheet of paper. I wrote down, you know, what on average I keep. I put in how much I have in there and I can kind of mark that down with a marker. I put a laminate or some, I just put tape over mine so I can dry erase it. Um, so that helped me um, organize more and, and, and see, okay, well, this eggplant has been in here for two weeks. I probably should cook with it. Yes. So we, yeah. we actually have, um, and it's free to anybody who asks for it but we actually have a freezer inventory sheet. Okay. So if you, um, let's say that you're the person who buys um, maybe a quarter of a beef at a time, you can list how many packages and usually those, those in, you know, you've had it cut to your instructions. So you're gonna have so many roasts and you're gonna have so many packages of burger and you're gonna have so, so you can list all that. And then using hashtags on the side tape a string with a pencil right on your freezer you can cross off what you have so you have a running inventory of what you have because you know especially like pork has a tendency to get rancid if it goes past dates if it gets too old so again we don't want to waste our money or our food so if you back that up and now you've got it in front of your face what um what you have in your in your freezer to use up i like to keep um, meat separate from like veggies and things in the freezer on two different sheets only because if you're putting a kind of a meal together you're going to pull from one or the other and, it, and it's easy to mark it down but um, then if you have let's say you put up 12 parts of frozen corn you know in your freezer and you're going to use two of them tonight so you got company coming over you know it just it makes it a lot easier so that you can keep it rotated. The other thing is if you can discipline yourself enough to add the new things to the bottom, you automatically know the things at the top of the list are the older things and you need to use those first. And I'm big, I, I like the baskets in a freezer and I'm not opposed to, let's say you have, uh, let's go back to, you can get really big, um, the Ziploc bags now, right? So to help with the freezer burn issue, you can take your your packages of, um, let's say that I bought six different steamable vegetable packs from the grocery store, right? And you can put those inside another Ziploc bag, hoping to stave off some of that uh, freezer burn or the crystallizing. So, and another thing with shopping too, keeping a cooler in your car so that when you come home, it's still, I mean, we sometimes in the winter, we get lucky and we don't have to worry about but in the summer, putting, putting your groceries right into a cooler makes a big difference. So if anybody wants any of those, um, if they want a freezer inventory sheet, they can just message us on Facebook and we'll, we'll be happy to mail them one. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just wanted to make sure for everybody watching, do you um, have an official website or just your Facebook page or do you have both? Um, we, our website is currently being built. So okay. our Facebook, you can reach us through Facebook. You can always call our shop office. Our office number is 989-551-2211. Uh, and our office is manned um, every day, Monday through Friday, um, eight until four with Linda or Melissa. And they're happy to take messages for me. I'm usually out working with the crews. So. Okay. 
Let me get that. So 989, I'd just like to link it in here. So yep. if anybody wants to copy and paste it, they can absolutely do that. 989-551. 2211. 2211. Yep. That goes right Absolutely. into our goes right into our shop. And sure. um happy to happy to help anybody out with that. Um we've helped a lot of people with um yes, when I go out and do a consult with people, the first thing that I always say is um what's bugging you the most? What's irritating you the most? Mm -hmm. And baby steps, we get that one under control first. And then we move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So okay. I've got one gal that works for us. Um, she's retired, uh, retired preschool teacher. So she's like fantastic when it comes to kids rooms and organizing kids rooms and things. Um, we had a situation, if I may just share, um, we had a mom, had a daughter who um, room was out of control with clothes and everything. Um, the little girl had 64 hoodies. And wow. so it was tough love. She had to, we had her make decisions about them. She could only pick 15. And the rest of them went to the donate pile. And um, that, that's, that was hard. It was a very hard task for her. But mm -hmm. in the end, it, it made life more manageable because it was was still plenty more than she needed for one for every day of the week plus all your other sweatshirts and outerwear you know it, it just was an example of how easy it is to get um out of control with something mm -hmm. so. so i do have um one question in the chat thank you nola for joining us today uh, nola would like to know what's the name of your shop it's our company name is integrate cleaning and organizing and um, we're, we're based out of Bad Axe. We cover here on Santa Lac and Tuscola County. And thanks, Nola, for asking. So Integrate is integrity without the Y. A little spin on the word grit there. Um, and some people say integrate. Some people say integrate. It's, you just, we don't care. Say it any way you want. But, um, it, we've been going um, since 2013. And uh, we have, um, I think we're right around 12, 12, 14 people here and there part-time that work with us. And um, it, it keeps us hopping. We're very busy. So, Awesome. Are there any more questions today for Connie? And they're welcome to, like I said, they can always ask us something through Facebook Messenger as well. Of course. Call, call the shop directly. We're happy to help. I always yeah. tell people nobody calls us because life is perfect. <laughs> Call us because they need some help. So. Well, I'm grateful that I got to have some answers <laughs> for my own home today. That was very nice. You're very welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Well, I'm just going to leave some more time um, for anybody that wants to ask questions um, now, or um, of course, Connie said you can message her on her Facebook page yep. as well. If somebody has a group or organization that they belong to and they're looking for someone to come in and speak about these things, um, one of the topics that I find um, frequently asked and, uh, and we go out and discuss it is when, you're, when you have a house full of things and you want to downsize and minimize, where do you start? And then another thing is for older people or grandparents who may have to eventually moved in into an assisted living or a smaller senior condo or something. And like, what do I do with all this stuff that my kids don't want? So run into those situations quite a bit. And um, we're very frank with, uh, with people with suggestions and things. And um, hopefully, you know, if there's um, in some way that we can help, we just like to get the word out so people know that hey, they're not alone with these decisions and that times are changed. And a lot of uh, where if, you, if you're not making a memory with Grandma's China, why should anybody want it? So those are the kind of hard issues we're, we're seeing a lot out there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, 
Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. Um, I'll leave a little more time. I'm going to go over um, Healthy Living Together's next webinar. But uh, first, I wanted to say thank you all again for attending today um, on Organizing Tips with Connie Kramer. Um, if you would like to attend our next Healthy Living Together webinar, um, it will be Sleep, the Best Ways to Get What You Need and Easy Home Workouts with Jennifer Long, PT, DPT, Director of Rehab Services, and Veronica Byrne, PT, DPT, Physical Therapist, on November 15th at 12 p.m. I got one more question here in the chat. Do you charge, Connie, for speaking to groups? No. No. Um, we're... We're really, uh, we identify with helping others. That's a big part of our world. And we don't charge for doing a speaking engagement with groups. Okay. I'll leave this open for just a few more minutes to see if anybody wants to ask any more questions. Please don't be shy. If, if while you're leaving it open a little bit, um, when we talked about um, organizing yourself, whether it be electronically or with a binder or whatever, having those different sections, you know, the sections um, should relate to what's important in your world first. So it can include like fun and recreation as it should. If the family has some goals or you have some goals of maybe there's a hike you want to do or you want to go in the you kind of want to go up north for a color tour or whatever. Important to plan and schedule those things into your calendar because then you make things happen. It's almost like if you put it on the calendar, you have a lot better opportunity of actually making it part of part of your goals. So uh, so I uh Actually, our next one is um, in October 18th um, on Medicare and Medicaid um, instead of November 15th. That was my bad, Nina. Thank you so much for that. Well, thank you everyone for coming in. Um, like Connie said, and once again, um, go ahead and message her on Facebook if you have any following questions. Um, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for having me. Well, of course, we're glad to have you and I'm grateful for all your knowledge. Well, I'm happy to share whatever we can. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who took the time to view today too. <laughs>